welcome to To Be an Artist. I'm here with Chris Cunningham today. Hi, Chris. Hi, Petra. I know this was a really short intro, but uh, you're one of the people I have actually not worked before in real life with. So thanks for doing this. Thank you. Yes. Um, how would you describe yourself as an artist? Uh, old. <laughs> <laughs> um... I do my own thing and mm -hmm. always have done. And uh, that has always been the aim for me is always to to not get trapped into a, uh, a sort of a job, as it were, as an artist, but to to just be creative as a an outlet for my life, basically. Yeah. Uh, and for younger people, I suppose, never give up because uh, as I get older, I'm having more fun and mm -hmm. more creative things are happening now than probably for a long, long time. So it's, it's nice. It's a really nice uh, place to be at the minute. Good place. That's amazing. Um, how did you get started in art? Uh, school was all, well, always uh, drawing, always uh, sort of playing with uh, images and things like that. And it was always a, 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 a private secret world I could go to that was my thing. Uh, I had four brothers <laughs> so everything was uh, you had to fight for space, fight for food, fight for attention or that but art for me was always an escape if you like into my uh, own little world where I could invent my own rules <laughs> and I could be uh, um, happy if you like and uh, find my own way. And that's, you know, it's always been the same. It's a lot of it is in, in here, you know, uh, not technical in, in any way. It's more a sort of intuitive and uh, sort of uh, a feeling thing rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And has, have you always continuously done art, like since a, a child yeah. now or were the times when well, it it, out? Yeah, it's times when it became I think that the what almost like a trap into feeling you've got to earn money from it, you've got to be perceived as good at it, you've got to uh, justify it, all those things, and your own ego is all mixed up into that. So it's all very it can be very difficult. And if it's if you're not selling work, if you're not making money, it all seems so difficult and hard and, and whatever. What I've, it's more or less, as I've learned to like, forget about all of that. What do you enjoy doing? And I enjoy doing what I do. Then I'm happy. And from that, other things come. And, you know, that's, that's the way I approach it now. That I don't approach it trying to reach a standard or reach a particular end or a particular style or a, a method or anything like that. It's, it's the fun of playing if you like, with images and ideas. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, judging from your uh, pictures that you post on Instagram, the standard doesn't seem to be very low. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> like, I post a lot. <laughs> so it's, yeah. Yeah. It, no, well, it's, uh, I, with time, I suppose, you, you get to a point with what you enjoy doing, but I'll post, repost, I'll use Photoshop, blend images, play. And it's, it's where, because I'm not tied to uh, any specific end, if you like, I can enjoy that, the process. And nine times out of 10, you, you almost have it, and then you spoil it by just adding a bit more or turning it the wrong way around or whatever. But not to worry about that just to carry on enjoying it and uh, get where you, the doing is the important thing to yeah. me anyway that's amazing um how long does it normally take you to paint one of your works or is, does it vary uh it used to be very quick because i used to use watercolors and acrylic mm -hmm. and uh, very quick and easy and then a long long uh hankering to I, I used to use oil paint a long time ago and I sort of uh, drifted away from that 
uh, when we had children, it was like, <laughs> didn't want that, you know, the sort of leave, uh, leave anything out that would, uh, you know, poison anybody or they could spill it or whatever. So it was moved to acrylics, and very easy. And then I wanted to get back into it, but I've forgotten how long everything takes to dry or process, which I sort of thought that's what I need to do. And I found it quite frustrating, but it's been nice sort of like relearning lots of things and uh, learning to be patient, which is my uh, best uh, skill, if you like. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's one of those things, but it's been great. It's, been the, it's a challenging myself into a, a, a method of working, which I have to rethink now what I've got into the habit of. And that can be, as I say, frustrating, but it also can be a lot of fun as well. Because mm. when it sort of works, it's, it, it, it's, there's a, growth, a lot of satisfaction. When it doesn't, it's okay. But you can paint over, you can scrape it off, you know, so it's not permanent. Mm -hmm. Do you mainly paint on canvas? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> again, reevaluating anything. I was talking to a friend and they always use board, wooden board. Mm. I thought, oh, right, why? He said, well, you've never done that. I said, no, not really. Said, well, you want to try it? And like, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to try it. And that's where I'm at at the minute, where I'm trying lots of different things again. And the, because I'm not worried about outcome, it, it's for the, the pleasure of trying and, and failing, if you like, and failing again and again and again. But enjoying the doing again, you know, that's the thing mm -hmm. I like. So. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm taking this um, experimental film course uh, at the moment, so it's all about experimentation. And um, she said um, the important question is never why you're doing something. The uh, important question is always what what do you want to express? You know, what are my resources? What do I have to do to get there? Yeah. But never, as she was like, if you start explaining why you're doing something, you either spend the whole day explaining or you're going to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, again, with technology, you can get hung up on uh, the, all the technicality for filmmaking or, or whatever. And it can be very intimidating as well. And it's that sort of breaking through to just almost to explore for yourself, isn't it? And, and try and express yourself through it. And it's sometimes good to do it on your own, but other times, you know, you need to sometimes speak to people and learn a bit and steal a bit of uh, their, their skills and ideas or, you know, why, why are you struggling in this way? Why don't you do it the other way around? Why, you know, and it's sometimes you need a friend to just guide you a little bit, you know. So. Mm -hmm. um... Did you, do you do your own exhibitions? Do you organize your own exhibitions or? That's what I've been doing. And it, I mean, it was great uh, with the London Jazz uh, Festival one with, with uh, all the other the girls that I was with. It was just fantastic. And the way the collaboration and, and that sort of, uh, the spirit of it all was uh, an honor to be part of. It was really nice. And it's sort of like, it gave me a lot of ideas to perhaps change the way I work and, and to sort of look at doing more collaborative things. Uh, it was always more, I, I was thinking, not good enough to be amongst other things. And now you think, no, it does, that's not the issue. It's the spirit that's important and the, mm -hmm. the sharing that's incredible. And you get a lot from that. Yeah, the energy was really amazing at the place. Um, yes. I think yeah, it brought the, a lot of people closer to art. Yeah, and it was the mixture, wasn't it? Uh, of you know the painting, the painting performance, the dancing, the music, um, photography, the mixture of everything in a nice place with nice people. And you just think, yeah, there's a lot of energy here that is is uh, so positive, all of it positive. After two years of negative life for so many people it was great to be part of something that was just uh, life affirming i think that's it mm. how was the lockdown for you did you just lock yourself in and paint or um was that less inspiring for you to paint uh, it, a mixture yeah i found um 
sometimes I had more time than I'd normally have, which you'd think great, but often that didn't <laughs> result in very much happening, almost as if um, having too much thinking time, too much, uh, you could get everything right before you start because there's no time constraint. Whereas if you've got time to do it, today you've got to do it because tomorrow something else happening. You have to get on with it and do it. And sometimes that's what I need. I need somebody else to tell me to uh, forget about all of, you know, the list of things you could do right. Just start painting and then see what happens. And mm -hmm. I'm always happy when that starts. So the lockdown was, uh, it was just a sort of, uh, there were time, I did a lot of walking as well. So a lot of, um, no, and that was good. That was, that was a nice thing because it was almost like compulsory to go every day for a walk, but for no purpose, if you like, just mm -hmm. to walk and see the sky and see the trees and all that sort of thing. So very good. Yeah, I know I did that too. I had the same lap around Victoria Park every day just to get some sunlight because it was like yeah. I sit in front of my computer the whole day otherwise yes um, victoria park's fantastic isn't it so, yeah but every day i did the same i did similar <laughs> thing where it was more or less the same walk yeah and i thought fantastic it's sunny in my house um it, there's a little lake uh where the fish were coming right to the surface and the weather was so good and it's like, oh this is amazing but after two years, <laughs> it's like I knew every little bit, and it was almost like, no, I need to go out, go go elsewhere, and and find new places to walk. And sort of, uh, I exhausted the possibility. <laughs> um, what what do you do to inspire? What what inspires you? Uh, everything and nothing. I, a lot um, comes from. I suppose sort of uh, imagination. I'm not. Uh, I'm not particularly fixed on uh, replicating images that I see. It's just thought and feeling and things like that, which gets you off the hook of. Uh, <laughs> it, it can be whatever you want it to be, but sometimes I do have to sort of say, no, you need to um, uh, address a certain uh, fix on something that you want to express. And sometimes that's difficult or harder to do, but I think the results often is more rewarding that you 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 do that. Always have music on, you know, and the sort of often is. I don't actually listen to jazz a lot unless I'm painting, you know, and it's a funny thing. It's sort of like with painting, it seems to 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 fit. So sort of music, time, the walks have always been good for. You know a bit of inspiration and i you know i love looking at images of other art and things like that so. um before you said that in the beginning you were so fixed on trying to earn money with your art because i guess when you're younger you just want to be taken seriously and the only way to be taken seriously as an artist is to defy the stereotype that you're a poor artist in a way because nobody well, really cares about the creativity, like they're like, well, what what do you really do? You know? Yeah. Well, how much how much did you get? You know, is yeah. it, here's my picture there. Well, how much is selling? Or has anybody bought it? And it's like it's always brought down to that rather than that's interesting or why or whatever. I suppose it's the end it, art's been commodified, you know, and that's the world you live in, but it's you know, not everybody can be Picasso or whatever. There's an awful lot of people, you know, that that is not the reality. It's a, it's a different reality. But the need for expression is universal. And it's, you know, all ages, all, all sexes, all creeds, all colours, or every country in the world. That's what people need to do to find an outlet. And if you diminish, you restrict it just to, you know, a, a monetary value, a lot of people, it, it, it sort of kills it for them becomes a sort of unpleasurable activity because it's you know doesn't make much money or you know it's isn't going to sell therefore what's the point in it rather than you know the point is the doing of it and that's that's the fun of it and if it sells lovely but if it doesn't it doesn't matter you've, you've spent some time enjoying 
and expressing yourself. I think that's mm. important. Do you archive all your works or do you ever just check them out? Like be like, okay, <laughs> you got <gone>, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look around. <laughs> uh, I'll show you. I've got uh, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of I, I have too many, but I can't. They're all like, yeah, they all they all mean something to me in a way. And I should I should um, be more ruthless, but <laughs> it's it, it's funny because you know five years later suddenly you think, oh, uh, I haven't done anything like that. But I was probably on the right track then, and I've gone on the wrong track or a different path. That sort of works. Or, and this is always a terrible thing. Yeah, if I just paint over that <laughs> with another, and then it changes again. It's, it has another life. But I, I know, I know what's sort of there, and it's like has a spirit in it. But far too many unfinished, half done you know, ideas and expressions, if you like, so not the best. I have a friend who's, everything is meticulous, everything is archived, he uh, replicates, does very big canvases and then does a, a replica on a smaller canvas, and it's all sort of, he has indexes with them all in, dates, times, all that sort of thing. Like, yeah, that would be a very good thing to do, but I've never ever managed to do it. <laughs> Uh, I guess that I never have the pr problem as a dancer. <laughs> well, yeah. <It's, laughs> no it's, stories. It's memories, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it, that uh, the actual doing of the dance is so important, whereas you wouldn't say, ha well, I don't know, you might have it, but do you have people wanting to, you to qualify with, with a monetary value to what you do? Yeah. I'm I'm actually somebody that's quite interested in getting paid because yes. so you it's not for me it's not for me like a creative thing that i need to get paid in order to justify doing art but i think dancers just get underpaid in general and and so many people take advantage of you and it's wear and tear on your body so i'm actually somebody i always try to to kind of monetize things even though like obviously when you do collaborations or experimentation what? That's on. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's funny, isn't it, that, that often venues and things will uh, pay for the bar staff or for things, but they won't pay for entertainment. They won't pay. We just assume, you know, it's good publicity or whatever, and they don't pay, or they pay very low amounts of money. And you think it's not fair, you know. But it's even big production companies sometimes that offer you jobs that you should get paid for like MTV or the BBC for experience. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the biggest companies out there and we don't need that experience. Like no, no. experience we're training our own no. lives, you know. Like, you we have plenty of experience. Yeah, it's the money, isn't it? We need. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How long have you been involved with the women in jazz media? Women in jazz media for me is a new thing. Um, I only got involved because Orly um, yeah. uh, got involved. Um, but I've been dancing for Resonance since 2019. Right, yeah. yeah. You enjoy that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it because I love... you. The funny thing is when I want to be inspired, because I feel like when I go watch dance shows, I'm always studying. So it's yes. not really... I'm not really enjoying it. I mean, I'm enjoying it to a certain extent, but it's not really that I let go all guards and watch it. So when I'm kind of stuck for inspiration, I actually always go to arts gallery. So I always had this, um, you know, appreciation for art because it felt like I see something, I see the colors, I see, you know, abstract or like figurative paintings. And, and that's kind of how I think when I dance. Sometimes I think in more in an emotional way, but sometimes I want to tell yeah. a story. So for me, it's very inspiring to go to arts galleries and I go to, you know, exhibitions all the time. So it was great when I met Orly by coincidence when I was performing and she was painting. And then she's like, hey, I'm doing this project. You should come to a rehearsal. And that's just how we started. You know, I just showed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I and think I think, it's, yeah, it brings the, the things together, doesn't it? The, the sort of 
synergy of the, of, uh, the expression of the dance and the painting and the music. It's, it's fantastic. And yeah. I think it's like for an audience is also great because they don't have to choose like they they get hit from yeah all, all sides that, so yeah 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 like the only thing we need is food <laughs> we need like food pairing now <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like, yes. how do There's you get involved to, to make yeah to fit the, that would be the, great the yeah like but that venue was, was was perfect the the venue was perfect wasn't it for that yeah so. Yeah, it was my yeah. first time performing there and I didn't think I was actually quite shocked when they told us the venue because I was like oh that sound like they do the, they, I thought they do dinner jazz and you know um it, like that kind of stuff like a mini run yeah quite formal yes but good fun. They seem to be, yeah they seem to be really open for all kind of stuff how did you get involved it was through Fiona uh, Fiona Ross and mm -hmm. she sort of invited me down or she invited me to do some uh, just some sketches and things like that mm -hmm. and uh, you know done some work for Fiona for her, her albums and things like that and that was just really nice because it was sort of again with lockdown like you, quite isolated because I live in in uh, the Midlands mm -hmm. so you, you know to come down to London would have been you know nice and easy and it was like that was the first time for two years that, that was the first time I've been back to London for two years so it was very it was great to be part of uh humanity again rather than sort of isolated and I think everybody's felt that so there's a lot of uh, you know nice positive energy and it's it's such a great uh, thing that we're getting together you know the, with the music and everything like for me it doesn't seem real that this happened like yeah. it seems like a dream or something like that. It doesn't seem, I feel like because there's nothing, there are no memories of that year, like. Uh, yeah, every day was the same for two yeah. years. <laughs> really odd, yes, yeah, yeah. Because two years previously, I was, uh, my nephew was playing in Camden and I'd gone down and it was the same sort of uh, process going down there, staying in London, seeing play, great atmosphere, fantastic and everything. And then two years later, you're coming back, but it was almost like there was nothing in between. No, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a walk around the lake and a sitting in the garden. It was, it was very, yeah. very strange. Tough for like young when, people, tough yeah. for youngsters. I feel like the things that happened, I really remember them vividly because there was so few things. So yeah. sometimes when you, you do gigs, you do gig after gig and you don't, you know, it blurs into like one thing. But during the lockdown, yeah. I still remember how long editing the film took me that I made and like this and that, you know, it's like, it's crazy how. Yeah, it becomes special, yes. yeah. yeah. Do you think the appreciation for the arts of the general public has um become more during this experience where they didn't have it where they couldn't take it for granted i don't know i think frank a lot of friends of it, it what it has done is made them uh have to think about uh i suppose like any any big event a war or famine or whatever you you, you have to reevaluate everything mm -hmm. and i suppose that in that is things that they cherish and like it, it puts a value on doing things or friends and family and events and things like that whereas before i certainly you just took it for granted next week you could do something else you know there was no pressure to uh enjoy particularly anything there's always something else where now it's like make sure you make the most of a cup of coffee in a cafe or something like that it's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's uh, it's a it's a crazy world now, isn't it? But hopefully, getting better. Yeah, I think everybody's hoping that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's so, the... were you able to dance? Sorry. So yeah, During... um, I did a few live streams. Um, yeah. I did one with Cleveland as a tap dancer, and I think with Resonance we did three. Um, and then I. I actually used the time to study a lot. I um, there was a, one of my teachers from the United States was doing um, regular Zoom lessons. Um, right. So yeah. I did that because I had the time, 
and it, I started getting into filmmaking. So I started trying dabbling in experimental filmmaking and I did a course at City Lit and I started really liking it because um, yeah, it was another creative outlet and it also kind of gives you a chance to reach a wider audience and because um, you don't have to be there to for people to see your film. So yes. yeah, yeah. That out. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it and it can take on a, a a different and new life, can't it? The, the, yeah. the perf a performance is one thing, but the film of the performance can be something quite different and mm -hmm. extend and it, you know, and, and you can always revisit it and take from it and change it and edit it. And, yeah. yeah. It is something I definitely want to keep up as a filmmaker yeah. because um, first of all, I really like the medium film especially experimental film because it's based on experimentation so like you said it's not based on any expectations or any certain outcome you kind of start experimenting and then you edit you just chuck things on a hard drive you know nothing bad happens to you and if you end up with something you like then you show it so it's, it's like a no pressure um kind of thing so definitely want to keep that up but i've really missed performing because I'm an improviser. So in order to improvise, I mean, I guess yeah. I really like Zoom. I would have done more live streams if I could, but like a lot of people were just not really up for it. Yeah. Um, Cause for me, it wasn't, I, I wasn't exhausted by live streams personally. I, I could still like, you know, feel the energy of the togetherness, even if it was via Zoom, but like some people, for some people it was hard. Some musicians didn't. Yeah. Yet some people, I don't know, they were like, oh, no, this is meant to be live. Whereas I grew up watching art on the TV. Like I was, yeah. I, was yeah, yeah, yeah. I come from a really small town. So we didn't have a theater or a jazz club or yeah. anything like that. So I yeah. watched TV for years. So for me, it was just like back to basics in a way. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't a terrible thing to watch streams. I still watch yeah. streams and now everything's open again. Yeah. Um, as a child, we uh, we lived in a little village, and to go, I think we went. We used to go to the cinema on holiday when we went on holiday, and the cinema was about an hour and a half away from home on the bus. So wow. it was a, like a very rare outing sort of thing. So um, probably that's why I did a lot of drawing and imagining of what I mean. But TV was the thing, you know, it's the sort of that was the thing. But no theatres, no very rare. It was, you know, so it was a lot older. And it was like, oh, you know, this is fantastic. You know. Where did you grow up? Uh, near Nottingham. Okay. And I, I live there near near there now, sort of thing. So yes. Not too far from London. But the last two years it's it's been like a a thousand miles away from London, but it's mm. on the train. It's only an hour and twenty minutes. You know. It's, yeah. um, what's the art scene like there? Um, it's yeah, it's nice. It's small. It's not. Uh, there's no uh, major galleries. The, the the main galleries tend to either it's super commercial, you know, of a style or a, 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 a type. That, you know that sells and that's, that's all good. And the bigger ones tend to be uh, bringing artwork in from London or elsewhere. So it's it's difficult for the local uh, scene to get anything other than sort of in the little town and, you know, make its own way. But it, that has its own value. It's nice in its own way, you know. And there's some interesting stuff going on. Um, and sort of little groups of, of yeah, good, good artists you know it's nice do you all know each other is it uh, i'm <laughs> i'm more on my own <laughs> but there's i have friends who are in groups and they, they you know but that was what i was saying about earlier that maybe more i'm going to do more because uh, uh, i really enjoyed the london uh, experience uh, the exhibition and Oriely and it was it was nice in itself see but it was it sort of thought ah oh, that's why I need to be doing more of that up here on a regular yeah. basis sort of we should try and find a venue in Nottingham yes yeah you yeah. think they'd be up for it we just have to be convincing <laughs> yes yeah 
I think so. I mean, we. <laughs> I, I, it's funny, I'm talking to a friend who's got a little uh, brewery and they have a, a, an entertainment uh, side there where they have music on and things like that. And I thought this would be great to get everybody up to do a, a show sort of thing. But it's, it, yeah, it'd be good. You know, we could mix it up with a bit of music and get some painting going and some dancing. And uh, it, it could be good fun. Mm -hmm. Um, you said you used to do sketching. Did you used yes. to at like music gigs or? No, no. I've never. It was again that I thought that's fantastic. Uh, watching the as as a performance almost of, of uh, creative. I thought that was fantastic work. Brave as well. Very brave because you it's you can't pretend you can't you know <laughs> you, you're there it's it's it, it's open and it's it's visible and it's shared and it's but that's fantastic and, and uh, I, I thought that was really something quite uh, spectacular and it's you know bravery as well to do that so um i know i've always it's always been apart from i've, I've done some life drawing classes and things like that but it's always been sketching my own thing doing my own place yeah. you know that sort of thing do you have a studio in your house where you work from no i i <laughs> i use a room that is, is basically full of materials and uh, artwork and easels and turpentine and um you know, i'm always getting told off by my wife that it smells of linseed oil and uh, when are you going to tidy it up and you should archive it, <laughs> but it's great. It's great. It's a sort of and you're like it's archived everywhere in the house. What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> I just need to do some more painting, then I, then all will be good. Yeah, constantly. It never, I never reach a point where I'm satisfied, if you like. So yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. Um, how many paintings do you reckon you paint? Like a year. <laughs> I don't know. Um, people tell me far too many. <laughs> Constant. I, I've got friends who spend an awful long time on one piece of work mm -hmm. and put in a huge amount of uh, thought, skill, effort, time, and I can't. I, I'm not able to do that. I'm, too impulsive and it whenever I've tried and when I was younger I used to try to do that and it was almost like and then I've just you know it would just not work so mm. now I've said don't worry about that just go if you want to do it do it if you don't want to do it don't do it and uh, so I yeah if you watch on Instagram there's a lot of things to keep appearing uh, some are old ones that I just show but I you know I'm always two or three pictures on the go at any time mm -hmm. and but just for the expressive nature of what it, what it is, the act of painting and creating, not with any particular end in sight often. It's just, uh, you know, with the colours and the paint and the shapes. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you mix your own colour? or? You... Yeah, <laughs> I try to. I, uh, I'm not great. Uh, I'm not. Again, it comes back to the same thing of... Uh, uh, almost like painting is like following a recipe and mm. there are certain things that you should do and prepare and let it dry and uh, mix it this way and I'm not I'm too impulsive sometimes and I can't can't do that so I'm always trying to do the right thing but it always you know has its own life if you like but that I, I've resigned myself to that I'm not a a, a skilled graphic artist if you like and I haven't got the the wherewithal or the uh, patience and the ability to sort of step back and just take a breath and slowly get that right it's bang oh oh you know but that's that's the way it is I feel like it's kind of like me because I've got ADHD and I feel like it's really difficult for me to sit on something. I need the, the excitement of the newness to really reach my full potential. Yes. So I really like to get things out of my system. Also because yeah. when I get excited about something, I get excited to like a completely different level. 
and then I just need it out of my system, you know, like I need it, I need to create it, perform it, done. Yeah. <laughs> and is that, is that why dancing is always, is that the way you, you found to express that, that energy and that, that sort of excitement? Yeah, um, I, I approach most things in life like that, but dancing came in handy because uh, it's a good job <laughs> to have when you have uh, that way inclined. But yes. for example, in, when I was younger, I tried to audition. I didn't really do my own thing yet. I was auditioning and then working for other people. And I wasn't as happy. I was obviously, it's, it's cool and you do new things, but you, you were kind of like stuck in the same way because you, you had to fit in. Yes. At yeah. least just the, the in bracket, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when I started creating my own work and do more independent projects, I suddenly was loving it much more, but also get be, I was much more in demand. People were like calling me much more because I think as soon as you put out there who you really are, it kind of shows and it attracts other people. Yes, yeah. It's more than, than yeah, it creates a greater uh, energy, doesn't it, than the actual piece, as it were, the CU yeah. as well. Yeah. And also, I think in, when I started improvising, it um, really changed because if you do choreographed works, you just kind of have to stick with it at least for long enough to learn the choreography. <laughs> 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 but that, that's the same what I'm talking about. This like uh, a real friend who's a very technically gifted artist, and he keeps saying, Now, if you do this, and then you do that, and then you do that, and then you can do that now. And I get to about the second or third point where I should be, and I, it's gone. And then he said, well, why? Wait, I told you, I wrote it down for you what to do. And you, you know, you haven't mixed it right, and you didn't do it this way, and you used it upside down. And, like, you know, I can't, but that's, that's me, if you like. So I'm resigned to it. But I think it's also your personality and, and who you are. You can't, I, you can't hide that. You can't change that. But in the end of the day, I think it's your style of, of painting, because if you'd paint differently, it wouldn't be yeah. style. Yeah. Because I feel like I, you can really recognize people's work. Like, and, you know, if you would try to fake something else, it would show it wouldn't look like your work. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And for, for me, I find that I don't have any uh, pleasure from uh, a, a restricted uh, process mm -hmm. it, it has to, it has to sort of give me something as well I can't it's not just like a, a technical exercise I can't mind it's not it's not not capable so it's, it just has to be expressive like a, a child mm -hmm. as it were so I haven't grown up yet <laughs> uh, do you want to no <laughs> no <laughs> no Give me youth. <laughs> um, did you go to arts college or anything like that? No, I had, it was quite interesting. I had uh, places at art college and then uh, the school I was at, uh, all the guys that I did art with, uh, it was a boys' school. I think there was six all going to go to the same art school for the first year. And I, I couldn't, it was almost like staying at, the same school I couldn't go so I went and did something else and I sort of I regretted it or whatever but it, in a way it freed me from um, having to be an artist mm -hmm. and allowed me to um, be an artist for myself as it were and have enjoy that that I wasn't having to try and get a job to do art to teach art to be a graphic designer to be a, a, a set designer or, and so I probably suffered with not having that uh, formal education but in a way uh, friends who did go that way and have done it as a job um, it is a job so when the end of the day comes they fold up their work and they don't want to do any more uh, you know, work on their art it's, it's, it's the pleasure is sort of evaporated for them it's mm. just a means means of a living and they're very good they're, they're you know they're skilled and they're technically fantastic and all that but i i i, I 
it's almost like I'm allowed to be creative and they they're squashed into a, 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 a remit of this is what we want you know we don't want that green we want this green and we want you know a tree on the hill and we don't want uh, you know all of that and it's and they're good at that and I can't do that I'm not able to do that but I'm glad I didn't so. yeah I mean I guess sometimes it's also people's perfectionism that keeps them always unhappy yes yeah I think I'm quite yeah. happy that I'm not a perfectionist because so many people that I consider perfectionists, they're always worrying. And I'm like, you're great. Like, what, what is yeah. that insecurity about? And they're like, no, I need to improve this. And, and it's not like I don't want to constantly improve, but I'm happy to release work that's imperfect if it expresses how I feel. I think it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. in the end of the day, I think you want to deliver a message to the audience or to the, in your case, probably the person looking at the painting. And it's not like you want to demonstrate, you know, perfection. You want to just demonstrate your soul. Yeah. I think it's like with musicians, you watch them and the performance is different. You know, each, each night, depending on the audience, depending on their feeling, depending on, and it can be, you know, they're, they're, it's intuitive and it's and that's what makes live performance so special. If it was always exactly the same, you know, robotic and, you know, all that sort of thing. I mean, I'm, I'm only saying this because I'd love to be able to be a perfectionist, but I can't. It's just not, not my uh, thing. But just have that, I think, to do, uh, the more impediments you put there, so you know you've got to have the right equipment, you've got to have the right sound, you've got to have the right this, you've got to have the right. You know, for me, if only I had a bigger canvas or better canvas or better paint, and then I could, then I could paint. Whereas I think it's just important to to do and, and go for it and have some fun. And I, I think also that's important that you don't judge others particularly or hard. be kind to others because you can you know, and feed off the energy rather than looking for a perfection in what they do as well. Just, mm -hmm. You know, enjoy the, the spirit, if you like, of what's going on. Because of, often what is told to us as a kind of perfection, or a kind of art, a kind of film, a kind of, is only prescribed to us because it's monetized or it's, uh, it's this year's thing. You know, often in history looks back and said, well, it wasn't that good. The really good stuff was happening in the clubs of London or Berlin or Paris or whatever. The, the pop chart was, yeah, that's what was on the telly, but it was uh, perhaps not as good a quality as everybody thought it was. Mm -hmm. um, with other artists, um, I've spoken a little bit about the need to be an entrepreneur in a way. To, to kind of create a living out of art and to, to create opportunities for yourself. Because how many times does it happen that somebody knocks at your door and be like, here, I'm gonna sort your life for you. All you have to do is sit at home and paint. Were you ever in that situation where you felt like you wanted to approach it in that way? Or? Uh, it's sort of... I've, with friends that I've seen, it's almost like a tortured life for some, mm -hmm. and their, them and their art. And I'm, I suppose, I'm lucky in one way that I, I haven't that. Uh, maybe it's not having the same ability or the same state of mind, but I've been, I've had a lot more fun out of it, mm -hmm. and I think that's something to remember. To make, and it's like watching musicians who are successful make a living. There's some that it almost like it's it's crushing them, and then there's others that they're having they're having a lot of fun, and it's finding that way, uh, and finding the way that suits you is is the key to it. And, mm -hmm. and for some, it, it can be a very uh, tough world out there, and others you can find a lot of lot of happiness with with doing it, and a lot of um, a creative outlet that that does pay yeah. the money for the bills and uh you know and it's you know it's 
you know, go for it. What you want and how you want. I think trying to fit into something else, somebody else's idea of what you should do, you know, difficult to make it work mm -hmm. and uh, difficult to sustain, you know, because it, 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 it's hard work, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if, yeah, you spend a lot of time in front of the computer if you want to, you know, if you yes. think about all the time you have, you used to contact uh, places and then propose your ideas and then organize your ideas and then do the press. Because if you have other people do it, it's really expensive. So I guess starting out, I mean, for me, I would do most of those things myself just to save the money because how how expensive i can sell tickets for 50 pounds <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing that people will see you as a means of them making money uh to take money from what you're doing mm. to promote you or to whatever and often it's quite a cruel world and you're thinking well actually i was i thought they'd be on my side well actually you just you know you're a commodity that they can you know make some money out of and it's it's a tough tough world I think the more yeah. you can do yourself or the more you understand and the more working with people that are in similar situations and you can work together maybe you know almost like get a little group together where you only need one promoter for six of you rather than all six promoting and all that you know, it's finding yeah. a way of, of doing it and also people often that if you like who aren't doing the creative bit they have no idea that they, they, they are not, you know, and yet they are sometimes the arbiter of what, what is art and not art. And yet they they have no, they don't create themselves. They, they're looking at it in terms of, does it sell, doesn't it sell? And for every good promoter, there's been a bad promoter. There's a hundred bad promoters that had gold dust in the hands of a great musician and they never, they never, they always try to, the, the wrong clubs and the wrong theatres and the wrong galleries and all that sort of thing, thinking, but they're not, no, not great. Um, but trust yourself, trust your judgment. Yeah, I, I guess everybody has to just do what they want. But I think if you, if you want to make a living, like I never wanted to dance as a hobby. I always wanted to make a living from dance. I think you have to realize it comes with sitting on the computer at yeah. least like half of the time, trying to organize those things and make them happen. But creating, say, the event we were at in uh, Toulouse the Trek on your own is hard. It would be hard work, yeah. very hard work. Yeah. Uh, but with like you know Aurelli, but you get a team together. And you could say, well, there's something that you could take, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming, but you could, that's something that has a value to it. And you could, you know, look to make it into uh, something interesting and special that you could take to other venues. Mm. Uh, but you don't have to replicate all the work over and over and over again. Yeah. It's there, you know, and still have a lot of fun as well. Yeah. Yeah, that show is great. I would really like to take it on tour. That would be amazing. But because I feel like you're, the energy is different when you're on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully there are going to be more festivals and, you know, sort of, uh, you know, for every city in a large town, there's going to be some sort of jazz festival, arts festival, and it'd be nice, you know, for that you'd say, look, we, this is what we can bring to the party, as it were, you know, and there's funding for that sort of thing. Yes. But it, on it, each individual trying to do it, you're competing against international setups, whereas if you can get that together and sort of say, well, we, we can bring a show together or we can bring, you know, give you three nights in, in Sheffield or in mm -hmm. Paris or in Hamburg or wherever or London, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's... Um... Collaboration really helps. Also helps um, introducing audiences to the, especially with multimedia performance, I find, because some, the painters bring people that like paintings. The musicians bring people that like music. Yeah, yeah. Dancers it's different. Yeah. Like dance. yeah. So suddenly you have 
um, this audience, they're coming from all the different collaborators and they love it because yes. they, they often haven't experienced the other thing that much before. And certainly never together or <laughs> very, you know, that was, that was the good thing about it. It was a really uh, sort of, there was a real buzz, wasn't there? A real sort of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, happy feel to it. Yeah, I think it was very there. creative. Yeah, I think what really made this one special was also that the audience was able to paint as well. Yes. So because they were really excited, they were like proudly showing us pictures, like two people yeah, yeah, gave yeah. me their pictures, that their paintings that they make. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I think they really liked it. Have you had any multimedia experience like before this or like similar? No, no, no. No, no, it was, it was uh, that's what I really enjoyed. It's funny because after um, the first night, went to, we were getting, going to the tube station at Kennington and the band uh, was sort of making their way there. And they said that was just fantastic. The whole atmosphere, the whole experience for them was different because it wasn't, it wasn't solely about their performance. It was poets, you know, uh, and they were playing improvised to that. There was, uh, you know, on the different floors of the, the venue, other things were going on. There's things happening the next day. And it was just the sort of nice for them to be part of something just beyond uh, doing a gig as you would normally do. It was, they, they said it was just, for them, it was just a great experience as well, which yeah. is lovely. Do you have any favorite painters? Do you, who do you look up to? Or who do you... <laughs> always uh, classic is like Cezanne and things like that. I always look at that thing now. You know, but you know, I look at all. You know, it's like uh, a friend gave me a book on Freud, and looking through his paintings and just his development. You think, oh, it's amazing. And I put that book down, and he gave me another one on Bonnard, and you think, oh wow the colors and so i'm just uh hungry for it still you know all mm. the, everything and it changes you know each each time i sort of start again I, you know a new fresh canvas and you just want to do you know try and get to something like that but you never know, but you you're on that journey and there's, there's mm. always the possibility a fresh start a, a fresh chance to create something special mm. one day <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that was my next question actually. Like, what books do you read? Uh, at the moment, I've got a book. It's called How to See. So that's all about art and uh, perception. I've got a biography of uh, Lucien Freud, the painter, and uh, one of Bob Mortimer, the comedian, which is uh, nice. It's all good. So I read that you know eclectic, eclectic. Mm -hmm mix how about yourself i read i'm really addicted to biographies of musicians that i like but i in general read a lot um about music history i'm interested because i'm really interested in jazz and especially with tap dance it's very closely connected to jazz so i read a lot about you know black american history and uh, music history Biographies. I love biographies. I don't know. I find it so inspiring to read biographies. It's not like I compare myself, but I feel like it always energizes my, myself. You know, like so many artists overcame so much. Yes. So yeah, yeah. When I'm faced with adversity. I'm like, well, he had it worse, and he was, you know, keeping on. Like, I have no reason to like sit here and have a pity party. Keep going. But, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite hard for me to read. Um, and retain information because I, I really struggle with concentration. So I kind of force myself to read, which is like often is not the most enjoyable thing to do. Yeah. But then I really just want the information that's in the book because I'm like constantly curious about things. So I guess I have to do it. <laughs> yes, audio audio books are good. Yeah. Let have, yeah, let them do the work. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I also listen to a lot of um, podcasts and stuff like that because I just find it motivational, you know. Yes, yeah. Yeah. 
I heard, uh, well, it was on Twitter, an actor saying about, he's always struggled to read uh, Ulysses by James Joyce. It's a difficult book. And I thought, yeah, me too. I've, I've, I've always struggled. And then he said, and then I heard the uh, audio book of it with good act, good readers. And it just came to life. And, I, and that was exactly what the same experience I had. It, you know, everybody said, oh, read, read, read. That's great. I mean, I struggled and I struggled. And then when I heard it, it was just like, oh, my goodness, this is fantastic. So sometimes it's, it's a good thing to do, isn't it? Just to, yeah. you know, sort of fill the imagination with another voice of your own. Mm. Another thing I really um, do all the time is watch documentaries. Right, yeah. Because that's also like, I don't know, I feel like any constant input. Yes. Of ideas, of thoughts, of people's stories, of, you know, history. So, yeah, I almost consider a documentaries like a book. <laughs> Because, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they're like book and pictures. Well, this, I think also, yeah, I think I suffer from, uh, I need, uh, you know, so, you know, Instagram, Twitter, all that sort of thing. But sometimes you watch a documentary, it gives, and, 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 and if it's done well, it really sort of, it builds into your memory and your, your mind lots of different things and structures. And you're thinking, yeah, when it's done well, it's, it's a fantastic medium, isn't it? To, mm -hmm. to absorb the information. Which sometimes books just can't do, you know. I really like to know the background story of things. I, it it fills it fills it with more life for me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you get that sort of um, you know how did we get where we are uh, and so, you know I do that with art sometimes where I'm, you know you have a view of a painter or an artist and you and you, you sort of like because it's become like say something like Andy Warhol's become. Uh, almost like uh, cliched and, and what it is. And then you go back and you, you see his journey and you sort of think, yeah, he sort of got it. What, what he did, everybody does now. I do it on, <laughs> on with Photoshop and I do it, you know, lots of people do it in every advert commercially. But he did it, he sort of did it, you know, before others were doing it, you know, and, and you think, Yeah, that's sometimes an artist is going his own way, doing his own thing, whether you like it or not. You just think, yeah, I can see where he, why he became what he became, and mm -hmm. what you know, and you've got that thread going through from through time, if you like. You know. Didn't Andy Warhol work with Merce Cunningham? Yes, a little bit. Yes, yeah, <laughs> no relation. <laughs> But yeah, and uh, I mean, Miss Cunningham was a lot of uh, uh, my little knowledge of him was a lot of uh, experimental art, experimental uh, collaborations, music, painters, poets, uh, all of that. Yes, yeah. important. Well, him and John Cage took it that far that they didn't let the dancers listen to the music before the show. So the, he, John Cage composed the music and rehearsed with the orchestra, and the dancers rehearsed the movement but Merce Cunningham didn't want the dancers to be like the slave of the music so they weren't allowed to listen so the they only heard the music when they actually, yeah like yeah, when yeah, they yeah. Yeah. a typical Cunningham yeah. is there anything else you want to say I really enjoyed this Petra no I'm fine yes <laughs> so, you know, just maybe inspire somebody that'd be great yes yeah yeah Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. No, thank you. And bon chance and look forward to seeing it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs>